In early summer 2010, the pseudoscience blog What's Up With That informed its discriminating readers that this summer would decisively show that northern polar ice had ended a long-term decline. They guaranteed it. The numbers are now in. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. After three decades of decline, an unexpected catastrophic acceleration in 2007 was followed by two years of slight increase, and climate deniers assured themselves that soon a temporary fluctuation would have ended and ice would return to historical levels. Instead, the 2010 summer minimum was one of the lowest ever measured, and northern polar sea ice again returned to what experts have called a death spiral. As this NASA imagery shows, the polar cap became completely open to circumnavigation as both the fabled Northwest Passage and the Northeast Passage near Siberia became ice-free. Ice expert Dr. Henry Pollock is a geophysicist at the University of Michigan, a Nobel laureate, and a consultant and advisor to this series. And I, I like ice also as a an indicator of climate change for its uh, political neutrality. ICE asks no questions, presents no arguments, reads no newspapers, listens to no debates. It's not burdened by ideology and carries no political baggage as it crosses the threshold from solid to liquid. It just melts. Among other serious grown-ups who have been studying the effects of climate change on sea ice are experts from the U.S. Navy, like Chief Oceanographer Admiral David Titley. Uh, we can see the signal in the Arctic. The observations tell us what's going on. We see that the percentage of uh, what's called multi-year, the thick ice, has dropped to levels uh, that, that, frankly, we have not recorded before. Uh, so although 2007 was, in area extent, the least amount of sea ice that was recorded, and 08, 09, and 10 were slightly higher, when you look at the volume of ice, the volume as of last September has never been lower. So, or ne and I should, in respect to Congressman Rohrabacher, I should not say never. In the last several thousand years, it has not been uh, lower. So we see the probable probable opening of the Arctic, I have told Admiral Gary Ruffhead, our Chief of Naval Operations, that we expect to see about four weeks of basically ice-free conditions in the Arctic in the mid to late 2030s. By the middle of the century, we could be seeing quite easily two to three months of ice-free conditions. That's enough time to allow the transocean shippers, uh, assuming they have governance, uh, search and rescue, charting, uh, insurance, all of those other conditions, but by the middle of the century, that's very, very possible. When I talk to my colleagues in Iceland, Iceland is actively thinking about how do they become the Singapore of the 21st century? How do they become that southern terminus? This becomes a, a very different ocean and a very different world for our Navy to operate in. So this is just one example. I could talk about sea level. I could talk about it ocean acidification in the, in the interest of time, sir, I'll stop here. But you're exactly right. This is looking at what we believe, not guaranteed, but is likely to happen, and looking at consequences, times, probabilities, and, and planning for those kinds of situations, and that's what we've embarked on, sir. But climate deniers tell us that what's happening to northern sea ice doesn't matter that in fact southern sea ice is increasing and therefore the system as a whole remains in balance. If we look at data first from northern sea ice, we can see the obvious precipitous decline reflected in this graph. And looking at southern sea ice, we indeed see somewhat of an increase. But sharp-eyed viewers may notice that the two graphs are on very different scales. Let's put both sets of data on the same percentage scale and see what that tells us. Northern polar sea ice is seeing a dramatic decline, now averaging 11.2% per decade. Southern sea ice on this scale looks much less impressive, even insignificant, a mere 0.7% increase per decade. 
The National Snow and Ice Data Center has a useful information page on this topic where they point out that northern sea ice is decreasing in summer, thereby sharply increasing the amount of summer sunlight that is being absorbed by newly open water. This key feedback is greatly enhancing the effect of global warming. The NSIDC notes that this is not the case in the south, where the increase is only being seen during winter darkness and would not have a huge effect on the climate system. This is because during the Antarctic winter, energy from the sun is at its weakest point, and the ability or inability to reflect the sun's energy back into space has little effect on regulating the planet's temperature. A recent video from NASA explained that small increases in southern sea ice have been predicted and are consistent with larger global warming. Summer sea ice minima in the southern hemisphere have not been declining. As warmer ocean water promotes evaporation, which creates more snow to feed the Antarctic ice fields. This view was recently affirmed in congressional testimony by ice expert Richard Alley of Penn State University. The science is now very clear for my interests, or especially with ice as well as climate history, and the science says that the ice is melting almost everywhere, almost all of it, consistent with warming. Uh, there's a few really cold places, uh, the top of Greenland and the s frozen ocean water around Antarctica, that increasing precipitation has still been controlling, and that's also consistent with our understanding of the effects of warming, and that is projected to switch to shrinkage in the fairly near future. So when we look at the world, what we see is ice shrinking because it's getting warmer. And in fact, you can estimate the warming from looking at how much the ice shrinks, and that agrees with the thermometer. As Admiral Titley points out, and this NASA animation illustrates, the most important measure of ice is not area, but total ice mass. The thickest, oldest areas of ice, shown here in white, continue to shrink dramatically, with the current year, in all likelihood, a new low for total ice volume. Meanwhile, what's up with that has moved on to new disinformation, new myths and canards, an ever deeper dissociation from objective reality and fact. You may not believe uh, man-made thermometers. We've heard arguments from the climate skeptics about those. But, uh, you know, ice is, is nature's thermometer. And uh, you just need to watch ice and you see climate change in action. Yo, VIP. Let's kick.